Hello friends, welcome to 90 plus my tuition app. Today I am very happy because I have got a basket full of oranges from my garden. Now let's see how many oranges are there in the basket. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Wait, wait, wait. What are we doing here? Yes, we are counting the number of oranges. And we know that the numbers which are used for counting are known as natural numbers. Now, let's take the remaining oranges from the basket. So, how many oranges are there in the basket? Yes, zero. Is zero a natural number? No, right? And we know that zero is not included in the set of natural numbers. So, if we include zero to the set of natural numbers, we get the set of whole numbers and whole numbers includes 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Now consider a boy standing on the road. Let his initial position be marked as 0. Now the boy starts walking and he covers 5 steps from the right to the initial position 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, here, one step is equal to one unit. So, how can we define the position of the boy? Any idea? Let us take a number line here. We can see that the position of the boy is at point 5 on the number line in the positive direction. Now, the boy turns back and covers 7 steps in the opposite direction. Here, after completing first 5 steps, he reached the initial position 0 and then walk an additional two steps. So what will be the position of the boy? We can see that the boy's position is two steps to the left of the initial position zero. And we know that the numbers on the left of zero are negative numbers. So the final position of the boy is minus two. And that is a negative number. Now if we include negative numbers to the set of whole numbers, we get a new family of numbers called integers. Wow! Pizza! Do you want? Let's have one. Give me a pizza please. Here we can see that the pizza is divided into six equal parts. Now let's take one slice out of it. Here one slice represents one by six of the pizza. So what is one by six? 1 by 6 is not a number included in any of the number system that we have learned so far. This leads to a new system of numbers called rational numbers. So with this, let's start our new chapter, chapter 1, rational numbers. First, let's take a look at the definition of rational numbers. The numbers which can be written in the form of P divided by Q where both p and q are integers and q not equal to 0 are called rational numbers. So what are rational numbers? It is a number of the form p divided by q where both p and q are integers and they can be either positive integers or negative integers and the denominator which is q cannot be 0. For example, minus 3 divided by 11. So is it a rational number? Yes, we can see that it is in the form of p divided by q. Here p is minus 3 and q is 11 and they are integers. Since q is equal to 11, it also satisfies the condition q not equal to 0. Similar examples are minus 121 divided by 6, 44 divided by 9, 7 divided by 3, etc. So, we have seen what rational numbers are. Now, we have already come across some basic operations on rational numbers like addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Now, we are going to discuss some properties of operations on different types of numbers that we have seen so far. So, let's move on to our first topic of this chapter, properties of rational numbers. In this topic, we are going to take a look at how rational numbers react to the properties of operations. 
Our first property is closure property. First, let us see what is closure property. When we perform any operation on a specific set of numbers such that the resultant also belongs to the same set, then we can say that the set follows closure property over that operation. For example, let A and B be any two numbers belongs to the same set A. Then if A star B is equal to C, where star is any operation and C is the resultant number which also belongs to the same set as A and B. Then we can say that the set A is closed under the operation star. Now, before we look at the closure property for all the operations on rational numbers, let us see whether the set of whole numbers and the set of integers satisfy closure property under addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. For that, consider two numbers 0 and 5 which belongs to the set of whole numbers. Now, tell me what is 0 plus 5? Yes, it is 5 which is a whole number. So, we can see that adding two whole numbers, we get a whole number. That is, A plus B is a whole number for any two whole numbers A and B. Thus, we can say that whole numbers are closed under addition. Now, students, what is 5 minus 7? 5 minus 7 is equal to minus 2 and minus 2 is not a whole number. So, we can say that whole numbers are not closed under subtraction. Next, let us see whether whole numbers are closed under multiplication or not. For that, consider 0 and 3. What is 0 into 3? That is equal to 0 and 0 is a whole number. Also, this is true for other whole numbers. So, in general, we can say that if A and B are any two whole numbers, their product AB is also a whole number. From this, we can conclude that whole numbers are closed under multiplication. Next, let's look at division operation. Students, can you tell me what is 5 divided by 2? Yes. It is 5 by 2. Is 5 by 2 a whole number? No, it is not a whole number. Because dividing 5 by 2, we get 2.5. And 2.5 is not included in the set of whole numbers. So, we can say that whole numbers are not closed under division. Hence, we can say that whole numbers are closed under addition and multiplication but not closed under subtraction and division.